Be able to do your reentry plan and look at this. What do you need to do to make it simple? You can't hear me. Uh, you are frozen you for me? a minute. I was okay. Looking. I was frozen. Okay. All right. So um, if you have a question, if you scroll your mouse down to the bottom, towards the bottom of the Zoom screen, you'll see a bar pop up, and one of the things that'll be in there will say chat. If you click on that, your little chat bar will pop up, uh, usually on the right of the screen. If you have a question at any time, just type a two in the chat box and hit enter, and then Jody will let me know there's a question, and we'll un uh, unmute you, and you can ask your question. And I think that's the best way to do questions, okay? So let us uh, move on. I'll now I'll share my screen with everybody. Hold on, i got to find my... Uh, I lost my presentation. Where'd it go? Okay. Can we see the slideshow? Yes, we can. Okay. So the topic is planning for re-entry. Now, if you look at um, all the documents, if you look at the form that Jody prepared on Google Forms, you just kind of look at it uh, on its own, it, it can be kind of daunting, right? There's a lot of questions and you got to answer those questions. So we're going to go basically section by section, look at the questions and look at basically what you need to, what you need to put in there and what's a good way to kind of go about uh, organizing your, your parish to get this done uh, and get this submitted on time. And this also takes into consideration some, how some of the other parishes have done this that have already got it completed. So uh, getting the reentry re plan completed. Um, you, you just do it in a, get your plan done in a way that works for you and your group. You can get together like we are via Zoom. You can coordinate everything through email. Uh, you can do a conference telephone if a lot of the people uh, that you might need to rely on don't, don't want to use Zoom or don't have Zoom or feel uncomfortable. You can use Google Hangouts, which is kind of comparable to Zoom. Um, you can use surveys and, and have people fill, fill out the surveys so you can get that information like SurveyMonkey or something like that. But just work, use what works for you so that you can get this accomplished and get everybody to participate that you need to participate uh, and get this stuff going. So we put this together and uh, uh, we're talking about how some, of the, some other people have got this plan done and what are just some good steps uh, that make sense for you all to do, right? So first, you know, re-entry planning meeting or call, right? And, then, and that's probably the best first step. You wanna have key people that you know, uh, you need their input, uh, they're decisive, in other words, you know, they're, they're willing to commit to decision making. Um, and they're also people who are gonna help you or, or help the parish implement this plan once it's, uh, once it's been submitted. And then set up your meeting time and date. Um, I would not, uh, uh, sometimes you go to set up a meeting time, you can't get 100% of the people, but you can get 80, 90% of the people. Some 
and I know there's a short time frame to get this submitted. So I recommend that you pick a time and day where you get the most people, hopefully you get everybody. Um, Jody developed a Google form. So I would send that link on the Google form out to everyone so they have a chance to look at it and read all the questions and understand what the discussion is going to be about if they have not already. If you're leading this um, call, gather as much of the information ahead of, ahead of the call as you can. That'll make the call go much quicker and much smoother. A lot of this stuff um, doesn't really require multiple people to uh, submit information. A lot of it you should be able to put together yourself. And we'll talk about that as we go through each section. Also instruct the reentry planning committee that you will be, uh, you, uh, you be completing the form on the call. Um, and then the next step would just be to hold the call. And then after that, you're gonna keep people on task. In other words, keep people focused on completing the form and completing the plan and keep people focused on making decisions where that's appropriate. And then we'll, we'll consider some recommended answers that, that we will have in the slides. So important notes here. Once you fill out the Google form and you hit submit, it goes directly to the diocese, okay? So don't submit unless it's complete, completed and it's completely filled up. Otherwise, you've submitted it to Canon John Tidy uh, and uh, he's thinking that's your plan, all right? So just keep that in mind. It doesn't save for you to come back to use it. So make sure you're prepared to fill it out and submit it at that time. Or you can type out your plan uh, and email it to him at this particular email, John at uh, diocef.org if you, if you prefer. So either way you can do it. Just keep in mind, the form will automatically go to him once you hit submit if you use, the, use the, the, Google, the Google form. Okay, first section uh, of information that they're gonna be asking you for is all this administrative information. It's very straightforward. Uh, most of it, if not all of it, should be able to be answered ahead of time, meaning before you have your call with your planning committee. Um, the leader or the person setting up the call uh, should fill out as much as this you can, okay? So obviously you already know your church name, your contact, website, clergy, their contact, senior warden, their contact, what buildings are gonna be open, any additional spaces that might, uh, you might be planning to open, um, buildings that will be closed, any outdoor spaces that are gonna be opened or closed. Uh, they'll also, they're also asking for, excuse me, they're also asking for a list of uh, your restrooms and locations, What's your date of reentry plan? And then uh, you know, how, how is that being determined? Number of services planned and whether or not you're going to continue online worship, worship services. Okay, those are pretty, pretty straightforward. So the next is about cleaning products, right? Who's responsible for ordering and maintaining the cleaning products? That needs to be part of your plan. Where will products be located? Um, where are protocols posted? How, how, how will information with regard to entry be shared with congregation? Will reservation for services be needed? Who is responsible for maintaining reservations? Where will signs be posted? Who is responsible for signs and where will signs be stored? Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go through all these questions, not the what church you are questions, but these questions that are on this screen and many, many more. And we'll look at the uh, what, what are some recommended answers that you can just automatically use that will help you fill out this plan? Um, a couple notes on the answers, right? The slides have recommended answers to the questions in the reentry plan. If the answers don't fit your particular parish, then just use whatever answers that you do. These are re recommendations that should be applicable to most of your parishes. Okay, so some standard practices and, uh, and products, okay? And this should, we recommend that this be part of your plan. Anyone entering a church must wear a mask at all times. Uh, a sanitation station will be set up at the entrance of the church with hand sanitizer and paper towels. A uh, warden will be assigned to each service to ensure everyone has a mask on and it is worn properly before they can enter. When properly means actually covering your mouth and nose. I know it sounds kind of crazy, but I know where I live, I go out, 
you know, for example, I had to go to the uh, supermarket and pick up some stuff because my wife is high risk, so she can't really go. And there's people walking around and they got their mask barely covering their mouth, not their nose at all. So we've got it down around their chin um, and uh, they're not wear wearing it pro properly. So just make sure that's, that's part of the case. Warden should count the number of people entering to ensure they don't exceed the safe number. Uh, Addition to wearing a mask, so we recommend the warden also wear protective gloves. That should be in your plan. Uh, no handshaking allowed. Safe distancing should be observed. And that also means no handshaking or embracing during the sign of peace. Uh, peace and any additional steps that you may be taking in your parish to uh, make sure everyone is, is uh, worshiping safe. Oh, you know what, um, Rod, there's a typo. It says there will be handshaking. So everyone ignore that. We'll change that before we send it out. It should say there will be no handshaking. Right. Okay. I didn't catch that. I knew what I, I, knew what it meant. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions so far? If so, drop a two in the box. I don't want to seem like I'm going too fast and maybe missing someone's question. This might be a good time right now to pause for questions uh, before we go into the next section. I was just a little confused by the first form where it says open buildings and not open. I mean, that, that, that doesn't mean they're open now, right? Correct. That's, that's cor yeah, that's correct. The, the buildings are not open now. And so this is um, the idea. The idea behind this is opening for re-entry into worship. And so, for example, at St. Columba, we have to open up our parish hall because that's where our restrooms are located. So, so, um, so you know, the sanctuary would be open for worship. Um, and I'm not sure what else, but they're not open now. This is in order to, this is the plan that each parish has to submit in order to open. So Deb, if, um, if we have a church and school, do the requests for opening, are they two separate requests? They are, they are. And we actually have, um, St. Stephen's has submitted a really, really excellent um, um, opening for their school. And so um, if I, I can, it's on, I can, I can figure out how to send that to you, okay? Okay, one, one thing, we have a couple of questions. Yeah. Number, number one, is taking temperatures a requirement? Um, so my reading is of taking temperatures is that it's not a requirement, but if you want to make that a requirement, you can put that in your plan. Reverend Deborah, did you read that a different way? No. Okay. So it is not a requirement. That might be something, you know, I would look at, look at, uh, your particular parish. If you're in a parish where you've had, uh, you know, some areas, for example, depending on where you live, and I'm not sure about uh, in, in, where, where all, all your different parishes, right? But this area is up where we live with that's had zero, zero cases, right? So if you're in a low risk area, maybe you don't want to do that. If you have a place where there's been a lot of cases and there might still be cases lingering, that might be a step you might want to take, but it's not a requirement. Okay, I have one more or a couple more. I've got, um, when you say having a warden, they can use a volunteer instead, right? Yes, you can have a volunteer yes. instead. Yeah, and um, the diocesan contact for schools, it would be the same team, correct? John right. Heidi and Susan and Chris and Reverend Deborah. Okay. Um, is the survey, it, when they fill out the survey, is that the same thing as them creating a plan? Or is the survey just used to make the plan? Okay, so... Wait a minute. What's what right. survey? I, wait a minute. What are we defining as the survey? Is it is right. this? No, let's the, the Google okay, survey. I filled out. I'm sorry. I filled out a survey that you guys sent out regarding the whole, the plan of how to how we're going to reopen. Is that our reopening plan, or is that just the survey to make our plan? If you if you filled it out and hit submit, it went to the diocese as if that's your parish's plan. 
Which okay. Survey? What survey, Michelle? It act, Reverend Deborah, it's the survey I made on Google Forms. Oh, this. Oh, yeah. This is the yeah. same thing. We're just teaching this now. So yes. she filled it out. Is that now her plan? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, I have one more thing. So from Linda, in the executive summary, um, it was understated or understanding that temps were required. It was? Okay. Well, then temps are required. Okay. It says, uh, page two, uh, okay. it says church requirements season two, temperature checks before entry. Okay. And I know there was a lot of discussion back and forth on that. And if it says it's required, then it's required. We misspoke. That's exactly what I understood too, that it is a requirement. Okay. It's CDC requirement, yes. Okay, then we misspoke on this call. Then it is required. Because they have everything outlined under season two, what is required. Okay, then that's required. We misspoke. Oh, I missed that. Okay. Any more questions? Um, from Faye. Faye, uh, what exactly is your question? Oh, um, so uh, let's see, Faye. But let's see. We sent a, we sent the survey out to our mailing list, but if you're not on our mailing list then it is on the congregational resource page, or if you give us your email, we'll send it to you. We just don't have your, somehow for, for some reason, we have not been provided with your email. So is, does that, is that what she means by the plan? I think so. I don't, how do you receive the plan? Is it sent to a certain person? Oh, here's, here's, her, um, here's her email. Okay. So we can just send it, send it out to her. Okay. Does, is that the. Okay. And then um, confusion about the word survey. The survey was simply um, what, what we created to help people make their plan. Is that a good way to say it? No, no, I think, I think that's what the confusion is. This, that was an outline of the plan and we called it a survey. We could have called it a pre-plan. Okay, so uh, just to let you know, we talked to John and Tidy today um, about some other things and, and he says you need to submit your plan to the diocese about your reopening. And when it happened and I got on my computer, the survey popped up. So that's what I was asking. Yeah. The yeah, that's what I was asking you. So, but we're, but we as, as an, as St. James and the altar guild and our reopening committee and our vestry, we have had meetings and we are, we have compiled what our, our situation will be when we first open and that that's what I understand is your plan. What, we will, we will have our own. Okay. Let me just interrupt here. Yeah. This is what I said at the beginning of the call. This is um, an outline of a way to make a plan that you can send to the diocese. Okay. If you have already done your plan and you've worked with your um, group and you don't want to use that plan, this plan, that's okay. This is not to confuse the issue. This is to try to be, to simplify the effort. So Michelle, for example, at St. James, if you've already worked on your plan and you have your team, then yeah. use that plan. Okay. Okay. One plan is not better than the other plan. No, I know, but that right but now, I, I mean, at, you know, we have over 70 um, congregations and we've only received like five plans. So we're it, trying exactly. to be helpful to people to get their plans in. Exactly. So, so that's what I'm asking. So you, John Tidy and you and everybody says we have to have a plan and we need to submit it to the diocese. Is this survey that I filled out enough to be completed 
on our part on what we will be doing for our reopening. Are you talking about the survey that we're teaching right now? I, yeah. I, this, this, what we are teaching right now has gone out to everybody on the resource page and to, um, to everyone who um, signed up for this uh, training. So Michelle did the survey or pl training plan, let's call it a training plan. Yeah. Okay. And it has been turned in, it has been submitted. Yeah. So Would that now be her plan? Yeah. Okay, it's what we were, okay, so let's, let's continue. Ask a question. Yeah, yes. We'd like to ask a question right here. Am I on? Hello? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we hear oh, you. You can hear me. Okay. Should we assume that the components of the um, template that we have here, are these the requirements, things that we should have in ours in order to have it approved? Is that Yeah. This is the... This is the minimum standard of what you need to okay. have. We've okay. gone over it with um, the Can and Tidy. We've gone over it with the team. If you have extra stuff you want to put in there, that's great. But these are the minimums. This is the minimum. Okay, that's important. Thank you. Okay. I think we can continue. So for the purposes of the rest of the afternoon, what we're going to show on the screen, we can think in our minds. This is called the planning document. Okay? I think that's safe. So we don't get confused with like it's a survey or not a survey. Let's just call it the planning document. Okay? Okay. Yeah. So survey just kind of connotes maybe the wrong um, idea in our minds, right? But just, uh, I think just to, does everybody, before we go any further, just to make sure if everybody's clear, just put a one chat box of, of where we're at right now before we move on. I'm seeing a lot of ones pop up, Rod. Okay. So did you hear what I heard? But these are the minimums. No, these things. Not. These are the minimums. Well, yes. So that by going through and checking, okay, we go back. Let me go back to sharing. Okay. All right. So. Answers or answers to standard practices and products questions, right? Who's responsible for ordering and maintaining products? So I'm sure there's someone who already does that at your church. What's, what's the name? Who does that? Who's the person who orders stuff uh, for your parish? And where will the products be located? That's a specific location, like, so that anyone who doesn't know where they're at, but they, they come to the church as a volunteer, they can easily find those products, right? So... They're in the closet, in the full, you know, in wherever, whatever, wherever the location is. So make that, I should be specific. Where are protocols posted for each space and building? So we recommend that they be posted on every door leading into the church or the church hall or whatever, whatever buildings are going to be open. And also, again, inside the door. So if the door is open for any reason, um, there's another opportunity for someone to see the protocols and them still, still be visible. How will information with regard to reentry be shared with the congregation? Um, email, uh, hard copy mail, phone calls to parishioners, okay? With an attempt to uh, reach as many people as you can. Will reservations for services be needed? Now that's on a parish by parish basis. Uh, some will say, uh, might decide that reservations are needed. Some might say no, just keep in mind, if, you, if the answer is no, you're not going to require reservations, um, then it might make it a little bit more difficult to control numbers if people are just showing up and uh, uh, you have a limited number of seating, you know, uh, you have limited seating for that particular service. Who's responsible for maintaining the reservations? If you are doing reservations and the, the, the yes was earlier, then you would sign the names of volunteers responsible for that. Uh, Ooh, sorry, 
where will signs be posted with information for new practices? Again, the same place as the protocols on every door leading into church, uh, posted inside the doors. So if doors are open, protocols are still visible. Who's responsible for the signs? Probably the same person could be that volunteer. And where will they be located? Uh, again, a specific location. So if basically your plan you agree with the answers and all these statements, you can just plug those into that, uh, into that um, Google form plan that Jody set up, okay? So you just make yourself easy, cut and paste it, except for the things we need specific to. Uh, excuse me while I turn this other phone off. Okay, I'm back, sorry about that, I apologize. Um, next question that comes up will be about the sanctuary, right? There's a list of questions on that that have to be in the plan that are part of the form that Jody sent out about sanctuary. So what will be clean? So basically all common services must be cleaned before and after worship, which includes doorknobs, light switches, countertops, pews, electronics, and any sacramental items, okay? Who's responsible? You know, you'll have volunteers and you list the name of the volunteers who are going to be doing that. And it might be a larger list of volunteers and you may volunteer for different services, but uh, I think you get the gist of that. Uh, when will cleaning occur? Before and after worship and before and after any other use. Uh, how will spacing for worship be determined? So there's a different ways you can do that. We recommend that uh, rows that are not going to, or pews that are not going to be used for seating can be marked with a tape or a string across the entrance. And then you can do social distancing by using tape uh, in the pews to show where, you know, where people can sit and where they can't. After you've done that, you can determine the safe number of people who can attend and then pass that information on to the congregation. Uh, who will keep a record of attendance? Uh, a warden, but you can make warden say volunteer will be assigned to count the number of people who are entering to prevent more than the safe number allowed. How will the record be kept? That, that would, I think, be, be up to you, whether it just be a, something that they fill out. Um, where will the record be located? Um, there, those questions have to be answered. Where do you keep it? I don't know, but you could say the church office or something like that. And the reason why those questions are in the plan is that if, for example, someone in your parish came forward and said, hey, uh, I have COVID-19, but I attended uh, the, the uh, service on June 20th, for example, then you could go back to where the record was located, who attended that also, and you could notify those people. So if they felt like they wanted to get a test, they could. So that's the reason behind those particular questions. And then how will people enter and exit the sanctuary? Um, let's recommend they institute one-way traffic, everybody come in one way and go out another way. Uh, you could do it, uh, uh, everybody comes in one way and then when they come out, they, you know, half the church goes uses one door, one half uses the other. And if you wanted, you could also put a statement in there that um, social distancing will be enforced. Any questions on the sanctuary uh, section of the plan? If you are, if you have a question, put a one in the chat box, please. Um, one thing, uh, they're to take the names of the people coming in for um, the service, correct? Correct. Okay. When they say keep a record of attendance, count the number of people who are entering, right more, and then you also want to take, you also want to have a way of uh, keeping the names. So if a whole family comes in, you would not need to have the whole family's name, you could just have one person out of that family, right? The father, mother, either one. Just because the, the object is, if someone later on says that they have COVID-19, but they attended the service, you want to be able to notify the people, other people who were at that service that someone did uh, attend who later got tested positive for COVID-19. Um, just, I have, there's a question here from uh, Linda with regard to the 10. That number 10 is firm for all parishes, no matter what size, for at least the first two weeks after reopening. And then I think then the parish can make an assessment about how it's going. 
kind of like a dress rehearsal. Yeah, so then we recommend that you put 10 people in for the first two weeks and then use the language that we put in here. Any other questions on the sanctuary? So I, yeah, think I, have, was, I have a question. Okay, you're saying uh, only 10 attendees per service, but does that not include the uh, sanctuary? Like, like the priests and the lay readers and... Yeah, in, it includes everybody. The 10 is the 10 for the first two weeks. I know that's really, um, it's going to be challenging. Um, that's for the first two weeks, just to make sure that we, we um, re-enter safely. And then after the first two weeks, the congregation can reassess, okay? Okay, okay thank you. You're welcome. And on the reassessment, we recommend they use the social distancing measuring and uh, have a row between rows, right? So people sit in the front row, you block the second row, let people sit in the third, block the fourth, et cetera, et cetera. And then once you've done that, you can count up like what's safely, how many people can come in, come into the church uh, and, uh, uh, and then and then move on, uh, move on from yeah. there. This, is, this is just a reminder that it has to be six feet all around. So it's six feet in front, it's six feet in back, it's six feet from side to side. If you think of yourself like the center of a circle, it's a six feet, um, I think circumference is the right word. Yes, yeah, circumference is the correct word. But I mean, you have to measure that each church is going to be, you know, you know, there's no one, one, one kind of solution fits all as far as how you set it up in your church. You'll have to go ahead and measure that at the time, you know, when you get to that point, when, you, when you're beyond the 10. Any other questions, Jody, on the sanctuary? Um, we just have some questions about the 10 people only rule. Yeah, I mean, the 10 people only rule for the first two weeks is, is that's it, it's just a 10 people. And nothing I can, nothing else I can answer on that. Ten people maximum in the sanctuary for the first two weeks. Yep, right. that's it. We clear to move on. All right. If they have any more questions, uh, put a again. Uh, I have one. Drop it two in the chat box. Did you unmute somebody, uh, Jody? Do they have someone have a question? Yeah, I have a question. Oh, see. You do. Hey, you got a question? Uh, yeah, that six feet is, uh, is from a center. It's not six feet. If you uh, calculate from a group, maybe a family group, hello? Yeah, so a family group can sit together, but they can't. They have to be six feet away from another family group. That's right. So okay. six feet is not what you, uh, as you uh, plot your, your sanctuary floor, it's not six feet anymore. It's maybe uh, from the center of the group, it may be 12 feet. It doesn't matter. So, you know, don't just use a six feet and plot your sanctuary for that, because that's as a six foot radius circle. It's not. It's uh, yourself, if you're alone, you, it would probably be more like a seven foot uh, circle plotted on, on a floor plan. And then you, you've got to put these, superimpose these over each other. And uh, you might come, uh, you know, it'll vary each time. Right. So if you want, you know, my opinion would be it'd be you'd be better off taking reservations, right? Because now you can assign people, and it's a lot easier because you know, you know, the Brown family's coming with four people; they can sit here, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it makes it a lot easier. But you got to use common sense. But this is the plan. In reality, you have to use common sense when you implement the plan. If there's loud talking or anything of that type, uh, the six feet no longer stands. It's more like 10 feet. So, uh, you know, we have to, you have to study that and make sure that everyone 
works with that. All right, I'll sit. Good point. Thanks, Ed. Who else? Any other questions on the sanctuary section? Um, no, we have a, a question about requiring the priest to wear gloves to distribute communion. I don't know if we want to handle that now or a little later. Yeah, we can handle that now. Is that, well, let, let's ask this question. Um, I want to make sure it, where are we at here? If every, has everybody read the On Being Faithful that I'm showing here? I don't know if you've seen it. Let me go all the way to the top here. This was a document the diocese put out, right, On Being Faithful. Has everybody read that? If you've read it, put a one in the chat box. If you've not read it, put a three, please. Now, uh, I have another question. Okay. Uh, gloves no longer work with the six feet unless see somebody has very long arms. And this is, I don't want to be, but uh, the, uh, it should be separate. People should come up. The uh, holes should be separate. Yeah. And, uh, and covered. And Ed, may I just Ed, may I just interrupt for one second? The bishop has provided a customary to the clergy with regard to communion. So we here in this meeting don't need to really discuss that. The clergy have been provided with a customary by the bishop. This okay. is more uh, this is more like setting up the space and all of our volunteers. The bishop is requiring um, actions um, for the clergy and Michelle. Um, I will make sure that John Tidy sends out the customary to you. I think it, that might have just been an oversight. Thank you. And if anyone else is, um, is in a parish with no clergy and you did not receive the customary, Please just um, let me know, and I'll make sure that you that everyone has received that. Okay. You can put it in the chat box right now, and we can start sending them out while we're on the call. Yeah, just yeah. Well, I just have to, I'm going to have to get with John Tidy, and it gets sent out in Spanish, English, and French. So, okay. Thanks, Linda. Okay, just keep keep in mind this is about filling out the plan, right? There's a, other things that aren't that are that are in the um, being faithful. There's other stuff that's being in being faithful and there's other stuff that's put out to the clergy that you don't have to add into your plan. So we're focus on, focusing on getting your plan filled out and getting that into the diocese so you can start your reopening. So that's, that's what we're, we're trying to focus on here. Alter questions. Again, it's asked what will be cleaned, all altar surfaces, and in other, other areas identified as touched during the service. So any, anything where people are going to be touching on the altar during the service, those have to be cleaned. Okay, Who's responsible, again, who's going to be assigned to that, and then before and after each service. Okay? Those are the questions for the altar section. Anybody have any questions about this section? Uh, Put a two in the um, chat box and we'll take the question. Okay. Sacristy. Again, if you can see it's a common theme, what's going to be cleaned? Okay. So again, all common surfaces must be cleaned before and after worship, including doorknobs, countertops, shoes, electronic sacramental items, and any other surfaces that might have been touched. Who is responsible for cleaning? And then when will it just be, be, be done before and after each service, okay? Parish hall, office, and restrooms. Number of people allowed in office space. You must determine a safe number or must be able to make six feet of separation within the office. So now I don't know what your church offices are like, so that's something that you would have to determine and put in your plan. Okay, you could say, 
we have determined that a safe number is only one person. We have determined that a safe number in our church office is two uh, with social distancing. So that's something you have to determine yourself and put that in your plan. How will the number be, term, be determined? Again, this is just a recommendation and measure available square feet of space and determine how many people can safely work in there and still maintain six feet of separation, okay? Uh, again, it's going to ask what the plan asks, what will be cleaned. It's the same, all common surfaces. Uh, who will do that? And then every morning. Hey. Hey. Someone has a question. I interrupt again. Uh, so, yeah, I do. Uh, two weeks ago, New York Times, Science Times, page eight, on the bottom of the page, there was a uh, an upgrade on the... Uh, the spread of the virus. And if you would look that up, I don't have it in front of me right now, but I, I, uh, it's very important because it, it changes all the thinking. Surfaces are not that important. It's air, particles in the air that are very important. And what you have to do is look that up and then continue this if we get this information in your preparation here, because that's very important uh, to look at. It's science times. Yeah, actually, Ed, may, I, may, may I interrupt? I know that the, that um, the, that uh, the group was a, um, discussed the science times article, um, but we but still decided that they wanted to maintain the um, sanitation practices high sanitation practices in, in an abundance of caution. Oh, That's that, right. Better to be safe. We just put up, let's keep cleaning the surfaces better safe than sorry. Yeah, I That's agree what with we that. All decided. And that's also why we decided um, to keep the first two weeks at 10. That's exactly why, because of the airflow and um, in that, in that exact article. That's an important article. Not only that, um, we are guided by CDC requirements, and that is a requirement of CDC for the faith-based communities. And um, as far as virus in the air, they don't stay there, they settle. So we look at the science and the recommendations from CDC. Otherwise, we see lots of stuff in the papers. Yes, and, and these, this cleaning requirement is in the, is in the faithful document. So... Um, true, true. Okay. So it's required to be in your plan. You're required to clean as part of your plan. Um, that's outlined in the document. And there's a, a basis in fact for requiring us to do that. So that's why that's in here. And that's why it needs to be part of your plan that you submit. What, what I like that's all from CDC because that's, if you look at the references that we had for our document and you go to CDC, you'll see that there. What I like to add is that bathrooms should be ventilated. This is, and if you have no windows in a bathroom, this becomes a problem. If you have a bathrooms that are, are ventilated, uh, you should leave them open and close the others. Okay, all right. I, I think that's a good, a good point. Um, I, I'd be interested to know if, uh, if, if you do have bathrooms that have no ventilation I'm, I'm under today's I know. Mode is required, but uh, yeah. okay. Any other questions on office? The office section of the plan. Nothing yet. Okay, let's move on. So now we're into Ed. Ed, we're going to talk about the restrooms again. So the restrooms are a little bit different because you're going to have to have each user of the restroom be responsible to clean after his and her use. So you make sure that in your plan and in reality, right, you have cleaning materials in there. And then after the person uses it, that they, out, they also clean the bathroom or the, the restroom, all the common surfaces where people could be touching, right? Doorknobs, countertops, light switches, electronics, and common use items. Okay, so any place where um, someone would be touching in the bathroom that required to clean. Uh, that's on top of the uh, morning and evening cleaning. Okay. Anybody have any questions on restroom section? 
Nope. Okay, so what we've basically done, we've gone through all the questions that uh, the plan is asking you to address. Okay, so is there any section we want to go back and review? Is there anything we want to discuss? Is there anything we want to, any, any, anything else here that we talked about that we want to need to talk about in some more depth? I mean, just um, for example, if you're going to have more than the sacristy, the restrooms, and the church office open, you'll just need to include that in your plan. Everyone understands that, right? Okay. And so if you want to fill out this plan, where is everyone buying the supplies? Well, we've been buying our supplies online. We have not been able to locate Lysol yet anywhere. We have only one can of Lysol. And, um, okay, so then that's a good idea. Home Depot generic, they have Lysol. Where are you located, Suzanne? Or did you find that online? Um, okay, so in Wellington. Yeah, so that has been our problem at St. Columba was finding the Lysol. Otherwise, we ordered all of ours online and we didn't really have a tr any trouble um, getting the hand sanitizer, buying the masks. It was very, um, we just let our fingers do the walking through the Amazon yellow pages and ordered up. So on that, uh, Reverend Deborah, I mean, for my own personal use, we ordered, we ordered uh, sanitizing wipes on Amazon. They were like the Amazon generic brand mm -hmm. and they, they were in stock, right? So, yeah. and they were, they were just shipped us. I think they're being delivered tomorrow. So yeah. look on Amazon, look on different places. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of other things that you can use other than Lysol, okay? So keep in mind, you know, there's, there's a lot of different products. I know when I went to Home Depot, the Lysol, um, uh, was totally sold out, but the, the Clorox cleaner with, you know, whatever the minimum amount of bleach, it, it's just, it does the same killing, and that was in there. So, you know, keep anything that's a disinfectant, you can use. It doesn't have to be a specifically the brand name, as long as it's a disinfectant is proven to kill the bacteria. Other questions? Um, what's the turnaround time for feedback once the plan is submitted? Yeah, um, it says right now, since we only have three plans, it's been really fast. But if we get um, everyone's plan on the same day, it, you know, we're reading them um, as soon as we get them and responding as soon as we get them. If we get, um, you know, over 70 or over 65 plans in one day, it's going to take a little bit longer, but you know, quick, so that everyone can, um, you know, know what, know what to do in a timely fashion. Um, so, so Deborah, those that have been submitted and received feedback, are they actually given a date in which they can open? Well, there's the question, really. I mean, there's, we're working with an epidemiologist and um, I mean, I don't know if you've read the news, the news today from Arizona is they've put their emergency practices back in place um, because they opened in a, um, in a careless manner and now their numbers are going up um, so quickly. They have um, reactivated the hospitals on an emergency, I don't, I'm not saying it correctly, but they have gone back to the emergency um, level. So we have an epidemiologist and he has um, provided a protocol to the diocese and um, tomorrow he, he's going to be providing um, the diocese a ch charts, county by county charts. 
that will show like the 14 days. It will show the, four, what is it called? The 14 day rolling average, the 14 day rolling average. And so, I mean, if the truth be told, and I mean, Helen can really speak to this um, very well because she knows a lot about public health. If we're, let's say, like down in the Keys, for example, we have had four people die, four people die of COVID-19. Let's say that that number would change um, a lot in the next um, two days or three days, then our rolling average would really change and we would have to pull back from the opening. I think what, what we're trying to do is we're trying to provide this document as a baseline, but I think we all know that this might be a process where we're opening and we're closing. I mean, we hope that's not true, but that might be what happens. And so, um, and each county, each deanery might be different. You know, they might have different, um, a different rolling average. And, um, and so, I mean, there's no definite, I mean, we all like definite answers. There's no definite answers. We're just trying to provide a framework the best we can for safe practices for our buildings and then a way forward. But if we go in the direction of um, Arizona, which I hope we don't, but let's say we, I was shocked when I opened up the paper this morning and I saw Arizona had put in emergency practices again. Um, but they have. Um, we're just so, going to be on our guard. I think what I hear you saying is that through this planning process and submission to the dia diocese, you are asking us all to be fully ready. Yeah. Um, such that when the conditions are appropriate, we can open our doors. Exactly. And one thing Bishop Eaton has been really clear about is if your parish doesn't want to reopen, um, that's I mean, doesn't want to re-enter, that's okay. You know, there are some, um, there are some really large um, Episcopal congregations in, in the U.S. that they've decided it's too dangerous to reopen um, and they'd rather hold back um, until, until a further time. And so Bishop Eaton has been really clear that no one, this is not like reopen now. This is more do these safe practices, you know, if you're, do these safe practices get your plan ready. It's kind of like when we do a plan for a hurricane, you know how we have the plans for hurricanes? I mean, we're all, all hoping we don't have a hurricane, but we all do our plans. So it's not like we're all hoping we never re-enter the building, but we're all going to do our plans. And then your priest, uh, your clergy or your parish administrator um, we'll be able to keep track of that chart in your re-entry team. You, this conversation might have to be revisited many times. You know, open one week, close the next three weeks. Open three weeks, close one week. We, we really don't know the way forward, but at least we have a plan for going forward as, as safely as we can. I mean, I've told my parish, my goal at St. Columba is this. I want everyone that got on the bus um, for St. Columba at the beginning of the season is going to be able to get off the bus happy and healthy. And that is really my goal. And so the Bishop is encouraging all parishes to maintain um, their online worship so that people that, I have a number of people at St. Columba, they've told me we're not coming back until there is a vaccine. We'll continue to do the online worship. It's not as exciting as in person, but we're going to do online worship. And so the bishop is encouraging everyone to maintain online worship. And if you haven't started online worship in your congregation, you know, let us help you. I mean, let it, let the let let us help you to to figure that out. Okay.
I mean, that's food for another conversation, but we can all work together and make it happen. So for death, for sure, we are closed until June, until the end of June per the Bishop. And we don't know if he is going to uh, change that date or make it longer yet. Correct. That's correct. I mean, I think. Someone... What? Did someone say something. May, may I say something? <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. Um, the resources that you sent out with this is absolutely fantastic. And I love the survey. I love the letter that we can send to our parish. I love everything about it. And so we have already done that. And what I found was interesting is that um, we're a small parish, you know, in the very beginning here. But um, one of the uh, questions that we asked, and we only curtailed that uh, survey out to the parish with four questions, but one of them was, is virtual uh, learning something that you would like to see? And um, not one person answered yes. So we are going to, that's why it's very important for us to do this, um, uh, the first part of July, having our very first service uh, in person with the guidelines. So um, we're going to, you know, we're, we're, we're going to do our best, but um, that survey that was sent out, I, I hate saying survey, but you, that, that, that was a resource that you put on that. And right. I, and I, and I made my very first survey monkey, which was pretty cool. Never done that before. Um, and curtailed it to our congregation and um, uh, virtual services were, was not even, no one even said that they wanted that. So we're going to, you know, we're a small parish. So we're going to, we're going to, we're going to do it the first part of July and, and see how it goes with every guideline that we have in by every precaution that we can do and, and just pray for us. Okay. I mean, I think, uh, I think we all want to reopen, re-enter as soon as we can, but we're only going to do it when the numbers are the right numbers. Correct. I mean, I, that, the bishop is very clear on that. Absolutely. So I would encourage your parishioners to maybe try to think about a way to think about online worship as a positive experience. Thing Deb too is um, thinking about your seniors. Yeah. But the Absolutely. Most populations you have, and they should be encouraged to stay home and watch the, you know. So, in your surveys, maybe, you know, you need to. I, I did a survey too, but my own was more like in giving them information on some things what's happening, like wearing the mask, if these are things they would agree to. So, I gave them a list of Correct. surveys. But, um, Yes, they well, need we, we, we are a, a seasonal church, and our normal numbers are 15 to 30 during the summer. Oh. And uh, with, with the survey that we did prior to this, we had about 18 responses that said that they will go by the CDC guidelines. And so we are prepared <coughs> to do exactly what we are required to do. We're not going to do anything. We're not going to try to do anything. We're not going to try to you know, sneak people in. We're going to do exactly what we are supposed to do, and and we'll we'll see how it goes because we we're in an opportunity to do that because I mean everybody's gone, and uh, half of our normal congregants have said that they will not return until there's a vaccine. So I mean, I think we're going to be okay. I think we'll be okay for that first time, and we will. And if we have to turn people away to to comply to that 10 people rule, we'll do it. Thank you, Michelle. Anybody else have any any concerns or any points? There, there's some concerns about the temperature checks. Who needs to do them? Who's required to do them? Where to do them? Do we do them at home? Can we... Um, come in saying that we've taken our, our temperature? Do we do them at the door? Yeah. Yes. I, I put the first statement out there. I don't read that as requiring you to check people's temperature as they come in the door. 
but that, you know, you can read that for yourself. And maybe the, I think that's something that should probably be clarified. Yeah. That that's as, just, you check your temperature. Yeah. If you're not feeling well, don't go to church. And that's on everybody's responsibility. But I don't think it's, it's I, don't, I don't read the plan, the uh, faithful plan as requiring you to check everybody as they enter. You know what we'll do? We'll, we will clarify that. We will clarify that information and we'll put it out on our resource page, okay? And we'll clarify how, how that might happen. What would that look like, um, you know, at the door? Um, who would do it? Um, what would that look like? How would the people be approached? I mean, I, I think the people at the door, your normal um, greeter or hospitality person, is going to really need um, some special training, you know, be some special training, so. Is all, is all, hello? We can hear you, go ahead. It's a problem. Who oh, is it me? All yeah, right, it's your a problem phone. with temperature checks. And it's, again, it, it's a partial, it's, it, tells you that a person is sick at the time, has, may have the virus or may, but most of the uh, uh, way this virus is transmitted is without symptoms, yeah. without temperature. And, but, you know, we can do, the temperature check is a positive, yes, but it, it, we have to remain cautious over the whole field. It's, it's not just temperature checks. And then, uh, you know, uh, you were talking about, again, I'm going back to bathrooms. Uh, we have old people in our church. I mean, I'm one of them, but, and to clean a bathroom after they go in, we'd have to have someone do that. Uh, and yeah, what, okay, how would so clean let, me, let me just interrupt for a second, Ed. So um, with your church, you're St. Luke's, right? Yes. Your St. Luke, so that might be um, a position that you might have to um, fill with um, someone paid or um, a rolling, um, a rolling um, roster of volunteers that are willing to do it. Like you do this Sunday, I'll do that Sunday, but that's going to be up to your, that's going to be up to your congregation. It's Please just something you. that's going to be an individual choice, either a paid person, like the larger churches, they have full-time um, sextons um, on staff, um, you know, sometimes even two on Sundays. I mean, that's what I dream of, but that's not what I have. Um, <laughs> but uh, but uh, that will be an individual, how you manage it is going to be up to the individual parish, but it must be managed. That's the, that's the clear, clarifying um, information. It, it's my question, my, what I'm saying is that we can, uh, if we read these instructions, we can, uh, uh, we can interpret them in different ways. And there's not much of a way you should, only one way you should interpret them. And we have to direct that. Yeah, I mean, we're leaving it. I mean, we're, we're I mean, we're not going to be the bathroom police. You know, we're not the bathroom police. We just want to try to make sure everyone is safe and we're no, trying to do the right thing to keep people safe. And, and we okay. believe that, you know, that each congregation will work very hard to keep their parishioners um, safe within these guidelines. I'm talking all over the church. That's not the bathroom now. This is... Uh, yeah. We have pe we can't have people uh, hugging each other as they meet each other. For the this is, is a no no. There's all sorts of problems that we haven't addressed too well. Let's put it that way. There's no hugging. Well, that's in the document. There's no hugging, and that will that should be reiterated in the letter home. There's no. It's a it's a six feet of social distancing. And and um. I think if you if you reinforce that message, you know, over and over to people, they'll get the message. And if not, you can always use a whistle, like a lifeguard. I'm joking. It's a joke. We have a comment from Linda. Okay. Am I unmuted? Yes. Yeah. Um, 
I'm, I'm asking to speak because my question's too much to type. Um, I'd like to get back to taking the attendance. What we have planned to do at Holy Sacrament is take the attendance, ask people for their phone number and their email address. Although with the small amount of people that we're gonna be allowed in the service, we, we know each other. But, uh, and I know the purpose of that in case someone tests positive five days later. And um, so we know who we need to contact. Who does that contact? And what is the protocol if uh, attendee number nine calls at five days and says to the church, I tested positive. First of all, do we send something to our parishioners who attend it? I if you test positive, please notify the senior warden. And then what happens next? I think it's a health department. I think the health department, that's the notification. And so we would call the health department and give them the name of the people and- No, because, oh no, once you're tested, if you test positive, that information is passed immediately to the health department for the for your county. And so then, then they, the purpose of doing the attendance list, because yeah. we were even concerned well, here, about knowing okay. where people sat because here's we're going to be videoing. Okay, here's, here's why. Because contact tracing right now, that is really um, the um, one of the best forms they found to try to mitigate against this virus and that is not a complete process in the state of Florida. We are nowhere near achieving what the CDC has recommended. We have in no way been able to, as the state of Florida, live up to very many of the recommendations of the CDC, um, of the CDC requirements on a statewide level. I mean, we are opening um, um, for for economic well-being, as it not in a, not in the church, that's why we're not open yet. We're opening. The state of Florida is opening based on economic well-being as the first point, and the second point is physical is the physical health of the people of the state of Florida. And so the reason that we put this in is because contract tracing has been established as one of the primary mechanisms to. Um, to inhibit the growth of the viruses. Mm. Our concern is this, contact tracing is not um, up to the par that it's supposed to be. And so if I had a parishioner in my parish that they called me on Tuesday and said, you know what, I'm not feeling well, I've been tested, I would wanna know, I would wanna know um, who was in the group so that I could protect my prayer parishioners because I want everyone to live through this. Does that make sense? No, I'm, I'm still confused. You would contact the parishioners? If someone from your church called you and said yeah. they were positive, you, you wouldn't wait till the CDC called you for the attendance sheet? You would contact your parishioners? Well, I don't know. I'll have to talk to our attorney. I think you're. that's a very good question, but um, you know, I probably would contact the parishioners. Now, that might be legally um, incorrect, but with 10 people, I would probably tell them, I encourage you to get tested. There must be some kind of legal way to say without um, getting um, going through HIPAA. There must be right. some way of not um, uh, you know, going off a foul of HIPAA to say, um, I encourage you to get tested. Yeah, yeah you will let us know. You will let us know, correct? I will let you know. Okay, we'll thank you. The, yeah, we'll talk to the attorney because I understand your concern with regard to anonymity and HIPAA. Mm, thank you. So with regard to anonymity, right, you, can't, you cannot disclose who tested positive. Right. Right, but you can encourage people to go get tested. You can't say, hey, Reverend Deborah, because it has a positive. That's right. <laughs> right. Yeah. And that can scare a lot of people. Right, right. And you know, because you don't want to um, ostracize somebody, right? But you can say, hey, listen, it's, it's been, it's believed that someone who was at the, someone tested positive in the parish, make it broad, right? And we recommend you go get tested. Yeah. Right. Or for example, if you know that your health department in your county, is doing a really great job at contact tracing. Um, you could call. You could call the county and say, um, "I'm in charge of the reentry program for my parish," or get the parish administrator and say, "I'm in charge of that." Um, 
you know, Jane Doe has said that she's tested positive for um, COVID-19. And um, we want to know how soon you're going to be doing um, the contacting on the people that were around Jane. And if they say we're going to get to it in a week or so, then, then you know, you know, time to get on the phone and say, hey, you might want to get tested. There's been, uh, um, it's kind of like when somebody has head lice, if you've ever had kids, in the, in the, in the, in your kid comes home and, um, it's and the they say, letter. hey, there's been an instance of head lice in, uh, in the classroom. Um, they don't say, you know, um, Sally had head lice. They say, you know, this has happened. For those of you who have experienced that. Does that make sense? Yes. And I have another legal question if you're talking to the attorney. Okay, but remember, I'm not a lawyer and I'm going to really get like um, lawyer, I'm going to get a lawyerly response because okay. I'm just telling you what I'm going to do and I'm down in the keys where, you know, we're, we're not, you know, no one's around us. Okay, I'm just wondering if anybody's going to have anybody sign a waiver. And I'm asking the question because I was on a SEEP conference uh, about three weeks ago. And um, um, the church that's opening up there, a church of about 1,200 uh, average uh, worship attendance, is only opening with 25 the first time around. But they had, and I, I couldn't get a copy of the waiver, they were going to get, have everybody who attended a waiver that the church is not responsible if they get sick. Is our diocese at all looking at that? I mean, I just think it's a scary way to get people invited and welcome yeah. to the church. But You know what? We, you know what? The, they talked about it. It was discussed. I would say maybe people had heard about that same um, church. It was discussed, but it, it's as far as I know, it's not going to be, it's not in our documentation. Thank you. Hello. The uh, church, if CDC uh, guidelines aren't followed, the church is responsible. No matter, so you must follow the guidelines absolutely. Otherwise, that's why, that's why we're doing so much follow up on this. That's right. As you know, normally we just make suggestions and we pray for the best result. That's right. Not this time. Any other questions? Okay, so you all have received the plan, the plan and document from Jody. You see that it's a fill in the blank and you know that if you have a different plan that fulfills all of those requirements, you're welcome to use that plan, no problem. If you wanna do attachments, to that plan, you're welcome to do that also. And if it's particularly good, we'll ask your permission if we can, you know, use it um, uh, around the diocese. You also keep in mind that the, although there's a required plan to re-enter, okay, no one's telling you go re-enter. If your parish doesn't feel comfortable re-entering until August, that's fine. You don't have to, you're not forcing people to go to church tomorrow, right? But what the Absolutely. diocese is asking for is yeah. re-entry, whenever that is, what is your plan in this phase, phase of, of the COVID virus, okay? So you submit your plan, your plan is approved, and your parishioners say, hey, we want to do uh, virtual worship. We want to continue that. We don't really want to get people together in the church until... Um, whatever the guy, whatever the goalpost is, right? Uh, until there's zero cases in our county or zero cases in our state or whatever it is, that's fine. No one's forcing anybody to go back to church and, and worship together in, in, uh, uh, in a group, okay? So just keep that in mind. The, the object of the training is to get a plan that follows the guidelines that was put out in the faithful, submit your plan, get it approved, and then, uh, you know, you in each parish make a determination on when everybody feels safe getting together. There might be 10 people that feel safe getting together two weeks from now, and 90 people want to stay at home and watch it on, on, on Facebook. Okay, that's fine. You know, you do what's comfortable for you and your parish, and that's really the, the message. And as far as the plan goes, you know, that read everything 
in the faithful document, okay? And then you'll see there's more than, more than just this phase. And then the plan is just basically the basics that the diocese is telling you we want to make sure that you understand and that you're doing before you open for any reason whatsoever. Does that make sense? Does anybody have any questions or concerns or does everybody feel better? I just want to say thanks. Uh, this was helpful today. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Everybody. When will this yes. be available yes. online? This plan, Roberta, to answer Roberta's question, yes, this plan will be required. When will this recording be available online? I'd like to share it with someone. I'll send um, the PowerPoints right after we get off. The recording, it usually takes like the next day. So then, okay. then I can put the recording out too. Thank you. Okay, okay, so, um, you know, thanks everybody. Uh, this has been um, just really great. And I, I wanted to, uh, I thought, well, what is a good prayer to conclude with, um, you know, today? And uh, I don't know about you, but I love uh, evening prayer and I love Compline. And um, I just love this prayer. And so let us pray. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night. And give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend to the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted. Shield the joyous. And all for your love's sake. Amen. Amen. So on that beautiful note, good night, everybody. Hope you're good night. Good night. Thank Stay you. well, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, bye -bye. good night. Stay bye. Healthy. Stay healthy. No, 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 I'm supposed to get a new battery for this.